Good morning, folks. We're watching Plasma release and dance on the northwestern departing limb of our star. Got some notes continuing yesterday's big story, weather, and exosystems, but we'll begin at spaceweathernews.com. Find the last 24 hours on our star was business as usual. No eruptive activity in the tiny, bright, boiling areas on the south there are actually the birth of a sunspot. Solar flaring is still low, but I'll have my eye on both those sunspot groups today. Solar wind remains elevated but begins to taper back a bit as Earth's magnetic shield completes two incredible days of blocking without a single storm level condition since the peak of the solar wind intensity began. It's tough to tell what of the northernmost aspect of the departing coronal hole will hit Earth, but we can already see that this next one approaches center disk now, and it's still part of the southern system. Let's come back to yesterday's big event. The rumble score settled at magnitude 7.8 and did trigger a minor tsunami across the region, but the worst of it was really the shaking itself. Buildings and roads were just the start. Good luck digging that one out, by the way. Might want to just consider making it a tunnel. There have been confirmed deaths in this event. Now, you'll remember that the day before, November 12th, this was our earthquake alert map. Well. In addition to the southwest Pacific, you see tiny slices of South America on alert as well to the right, and although it would later be downgraded to a 5.7, which is still the next largest rumble in any location in the last 24 hours other than New Zealand, it did originally come in at 6.2. Folks, as we've discussed recently, the lithosphere and atmosphere do an excellent job of coupling, and severe weather is beginning to batter the region just struck by that earthquake. This is after its having done so in Australia, and the bad weather is due to the low-pressure earth spot nearby. Its presence, severe character in the days before, and a couple blot echoes is why we put this region on alert in the first place, so expect the system to remain powerful until its exit. Lastly, folks, interesting article on the orbits of Alpha and Proxima Centauri. Every 600,000 years, the two primaries do one orbit, and their close approach is less than half the apastron, or furthest distance. Proxima may even get slightly further away from us than Alpha at some point in the orbit, which would change the closest star to ours. Website members, your emails are saying that the last episode of Fly on the Wall was the best in months. It is fun when I put people on the spot like that, isn't it? We've got pressure and radar forecast right now, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.